Hello and welcome to What The Gaffs Stop podcast. My name is Zach Waters. You may notice there's a bit of a name change and I've moved away from the Campbell Fort Talk as the name of the podcast. What The Gaffs Stop podcast gives it a little bit more branding, gives it a little bit more of a standout name. It's like an umbrella to the Fort Talks, the frontline reporting and a new concept that I'm working on. So today's photo talk was a real delight for me. It was a pleasure to spend some time with photojournalist, a photographer, photojournalist for over 70 years, Dennis Thorpe. I just wanted to talk to him about his long career as a photographer, how it all started, how did he make the connection, where has his journey as a photographer taken him in the world? And I really wanted to meet him. So a few weeks ago, I was in Manchester exhibiting as part of the Photo North Festival alongside... Tom Stoddard, Peter Dench, Richard Davis, Chris Floyd, Mark Devlin, David Colliger, and Carolyn Mendelssohn. So I arranged to meet Dennis early one Sunday morning in Stockport. What I didn't bank on was what we all did every evening after the three-day show was finished. So on Sunday morning, with a very heavy head and feeling worse for wear, I got up very early and got on a train and headed over to Stockport. And as Dennis was making me a cup of tea, I asked him, what are you up to, Dennis? What am I up to now? I've been um, concentrating on my 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 latest um, obsession, which has been because of uh, COVID and because of lockdown, I've not been able to get anywhere. Yeah. And uh, I've been sort of st- stuck in the house. So I, I, I was watching my bird population, yeah, the right. small birds. I've never really been interested in birds. My wife, she um, organised a beautiful garden, wonderful garden. Yeah. And I've watched birds coming into the garden, but I haven't a clue what they were. <laughs> so I, I thought, well, I'll, um, I'll take a little more interest in them. And then, because I'm a photographer, I saw them perched on a twig or whatever, and I thought, they're there, and then they're not. What happens in between? I thought, I'll get myself a challenge. I'll try and photograph them in flight. Impossible. I sat for months and months on an old bench out there till these birds got used to me, and they came up to the feeders, and then they were gone. Occasionally, I was, re- I, I was really lucky, or, or I was getting better at it. And in fact, I was, I was going a bit mad, to be honest. In fact, I was even talking to a robin. <laughs> I, and I, I, remember saying to, I remember saying to the robin, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the, the robin said back to me, you're not on. You put it. On, what, what camera have you got? Put it on a four thousand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw. So I, I was doing that, and I, it all happened that I I was able to photograph goldfinches, mm. beautiful things happening in my garden, and and all in action, which was the most important thing for me. It was published in the Guardian. Yes, it was. It, in the end, yes, yes. Yeah, my right. my uh, guardian colleague, um, Chris uh, Thomond, he saw what I was doing. So he, he kept taking the odd file and um, p- putting it into the Guardian's uh, bank of pictures. You've had a number of books out. You've had at least five I know of. You've had View from the North, On Home Ground, um, The Guardian, 100 Years, um, Long Exposure, that was the Manchester yes, place, well, yes. Shepherd's Year, and Dennis Thorpe, 50, um, 2000. But while I was sitting here, and I got you to sign my View for the North, which was published by Blue Coat Press, you just piled up a stack of books next to me. So let's go through them. And then uh, we can talk about this one, which you've just been talking to me about. So what have we got here? We've got The Family. So this is, you self-publishing these, aren't you? Yes. So yes. you've got The Family. And then what else we've got here? I've got, which is, I'm interested in this, how they were, which is, I guess, because that, who's that? So I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. Yes. So I guess this Most is... Most famous people are there. Yeah, and then this is your jobbing life, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and this is your... I remember the Louis Armstrong pictures. So this is... We'll look through that in a second. So this is your jobbing life. Then you've got 
India 77. Yes. And then you've got People of the Soviet Union. That really sounds really interesting. Then you've got the Trawler Men, which is colour, and the family's colour. It's the not all colour. The, the one? It's not all colour. Well, there's a cover, foot colour. Do, do you know, I, I was... I, I, went, uh, yeah. I went on the Cod War, right? Jesus, really? In 1958, I think it was. I went on a steam trawler from Grimsby and uh, the Cod War was about a 12 mile limit. And of course they, were, had, they had gunboats and, uh, and we had presence up there. I was really there for the action of of being uh, of the uh, uh, trawler men being confronted by Icelandic gunboats. This is 1958. Mm. It's beautiful. There's some beautiful stuff in here. Where could we get this? Where could you get this? Would you, go, would you have to go on blurb to buy this? I don't really put them on blurb. I, 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 I just make them because I need to have them. I, I need to have them yeah. as a, as as a not really as a collection. You see. It's yeah. my archive, really. But this should be a book on itself. Well, let me tell you about that, because I was at the, I was at the Daily Mail, actually, at the time, yeah. and they asked me to go to um, look at the Cod War. Mm. But they were really only interested in the action. I was there for a month on a steam trawler. You look as though you... The, the, you but the thing is that... Um, you have been on there for a month because of the engagement with the subject. But the thing is that the... the the action wasn't very often. Um, what, the, what, the, um, what the Icelandic people were doing was uh, trying to cut the trawl. It, it, once they, they go over and cut the trawl wires, the trawl men have to go back home again because right. they can't, um, they can't, they, they, they can't fish anymore. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how, how it was being uh, prevented. Right. So... And so not a very easy thing to photograph. Yeah. But I did photograph the thing. Now the thing is getting my photographs back. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'd got my laptop there, hadn't I, in, in 1958. Time traveller. <laughs> <laughs> so well, in fact, what, what I did, uh, the skipper said, there's only one way can, we can get your films back. He said, I'll get a cocoa tin, we'll put them in it, and we'll shoot a line across to a ship that's going back Seriously? to the mainland. And we shot a line and, and they, they took my cocoa tin with my films in. Then they set, as soon as they got to the mainland, they put it in the post for me. And it was picked up you... by, by the Daily Mail. I got uh, one photograph in, possibly. Caught a passing ship, hmm. sent it on a wire over the ship. That's it. Wow. Yes, very they were wonderful people to be yeah. with. It took me a long time, really, because they were quite... I mean, they didn't know what, what on earth a, a reporter, <laughs> photographer that. was about, yeah. you know. So that's the main thing about being in photojournalism, really, is getting to know people. Absolutely. And getting their trust. And understanding really. your relationship. And that's mo more important yeah, than absolutely. anything. It is. You can put the cameras away forever, and, yeah. but until you've got that, um, that rapport with people. I thought, well, I'll just carry on. And, 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 you know, I only had one camera. I had a, a second-hand Roliflex. I was experimenting with colour. I had one roll of Ferrania colour. Film for that shoot for that well because I, I didn't there was no way I was do, doing I, I, I was going on a news job you see I, I took a lot of um, of black and white what film for myself you? and so I thought well I'll just photograph all these wonderful people and this uh, and their lives what film were you using black and white it was probably probably um, HP three HP three in those days Ilford. Was it really in 58 HP3? Yes. Wow. And you've got a colour cover on that. There might have been some Tri-X, I don't know. Yeah. The reason um, I'm using a Roliflex is that when I went eventually to the national newspaper, I was offered uh, a staff job on the Daily Mail in London. Yeah. The picture editor said that the deal will be that you go to Manchester. <laughs> Really? Yes. 
So I went to Manchester. I was still using at the time, if we wanted to talk about, about equipment and things, yeah. technical things. But I, I was, I've always used 35 millimeter cameras. I had a beautiful contacts to camera. If you, if you talk about picture post people, most of them had the contacts too. Yeah. Bert Hardy did, and, uh, and Kurt Hutton certainly did, with Likers as well. But the, but the contacts at the time was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. The one I had was made in something like 1936, I think. Then uh, when, I, um, uh, 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 when I got there, they said, oh no, you, you can't use that. It's, they're the sort of, that's a toy camera. <laughs> and, and so I was given a plate camera well, using glass plates. Ones. Yes, yeah. using glass plates. So I thought, well, I can't use that. Because they liked, the dark rooms liked to have the simple way of, of, um, of processing. Mm. You, uh, you, they can process plates easily, slap them in the enlarger, wet, yeah. and print wet, you know, all those. So it's a very, very simple way of, of yeah. going. It's okay for, for one-shot kind of things, yeah. but um, not my kind of thing. Anyway, I've compromised. I've t I then went and bought a Rolleiflex, a second-hand Rolleiflex, which cost me in 19... 58, 57, 58, it cost me, um, cost me about 135 pounds then, second hand, you know. So that's what I was using on the, uh, yeah, on, on, the, the on the Grimsby trawler. Daily Mail weren't interested, you know, in the lifestyle of, that, that's not, not the kind of thing they wanted. I mean, it was a news business, isn't it? Yeah. And they're not really interested in, in a, in a picture story of the um, yeah. lifestyle of of, of, uh, of just uh, let's go back before the mail. Let's go back into your early childhood and yes. the, the time which led up to you realizing photography was what you wanted to do. Can you take me there? I can take you right back. Good. I mean, I, I it wasn't photography that I was interested in. I, I at school. We had English teacher who one day said, I want you to be reporters and I want you to write a report. I want you to use your imagination. And the imagination is the, is the great word. Mm -hmm. I want you to use ima imagination and go to an event and and write about it. So I wrote about the only thing I ever knew, and that was about mining. But I was brought up in a mining yeah. community, you when see. And, and, and I wrote about a pit disaster. Where were you brought up? Hmm? Whereabouts were you brought up as a child? In, in Mansfield, Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of coal mines around there. Yeah. In fact, my father, when he was 14, he went to uh, he went to uh, to to have a to have his first uh, working experience in in a in a pit. He didn't like um, working with. Um, they had pit ponies, I think then. Mm. But he he then um, he, he then decided he wouldn't want to work down underground. So he he went and worked in a foundry. So it was an, uh, you know similarly really hard. Hard craft, you know, yeah. working in a foundry. So, but a lot of my relatives were in mining, yeah. and I used to go and stay with them. And they all seemed to be getting injured and everything like this, you know. So I, I, I knew all about. So I wrote this little piece, and the wonderful thing was, is that it's quite unusual, but the teacher, he read it out to the class. And what did I want to be after that? I wanted to be a reporter. And so that was my ambition. And that was really. when you started getting... That was my ambition. The direction. I went, uh, eventually, when I left school at 16, I was desperate to be on a newspaper, and I managed to get an interview with the editor of a local paper in Mansfield. 
and he, uh, the editor said, do you know anything about photography? I said, not much, no, no, I want to be a reporter. He said, well, we've got, we're employing now an, a, a, a staff photographer here and he needs an assistant. How about you be his assistant? So I said, and they said, once you're in, of course, once you're in newspapers, you can do anything. Mm. So I, I said, wonderful. <laughs> so I became the photographer's totally. assistant. And, and what the wonderful thing was, was that um, I knew nothing about press photography. Really, hardly anything. I didn't, I never even seen a press photographer, I don't think. But what was the wonderful thing was that um, this guy didn't have one of these big plate cameras. You know, if you looked at uh, magazines and you, you saw uh, American photographers, really, with great big speed graphics with big flash That's things right. on. That was my yeah. sort of image of a press photographer. Yeah. This guy had a small contact camera, but he was so meticulous. And uh, he took me into this dark room and there were all kind of chemicals there. And he showed me how to mix them all up and he said, everything has to be perfect, you see. So he then taught me how to get fine grain from this thing. And, and that, that, that was a revelation really for me. That's, that's how I started. And so I couldn't go back from, um, from that. A very unusual but very fortunate start in, mm, in my photographic life. What was your first picture? My first picture, one of my first pictures, I think, was because um, I, I, I could, I could uh, eventually borrow the, one of the cameras, yes. you know. Uh, my first picture was from my bedroom window and it was uh, a, 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 like a sort of silhouette yeah. of people walking. You see, there were no, there were no training schemes in those days. You didn't have any, I think there was probably one college, I think. Yeah. And I used to go to the Mansfield Public Library and I would look around, try and find books. And hardly any books that told you about, they were totally technical things, but they didn't show you anything about photojournalism and things. And I went to the art section and the only thing, pictures I could find and I liked were the Impressionists, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I liked them very much and I thought, that um, Degas, for instance, I, I looked at his pictures and I thought, there's something wonderful about these. And, and then I discovered Degas um, were doing ironing and laundering, laundress. They were, they were ironing away with this flat iron. And I thought, my mother does that. Oh. So that's why I then thought I'll take those kind of pictures and I thought I'm sure I could take a picture like that That's and the light and, and of course one of my favorite pictures is uh, my mother yeah. ironing away and the light coming in through a fan light in the doorway and uh, in a way could that be your first picture where it really made a difference that, to that you? was made a big difference yeah. to me yeah, made. Interesting, and it? so I could find that I could capture not not just make a record, but I could get the sort of feeling of where I was, mm. and so, I get so, the atmosphere, and and uh, and take people in, into this into into my world. It was yeah. so wonderful, really. It is absolutely. And so, uh, where did the the main thing is where do you go to use that uh, business? Well, then who would the next stage would be? Who is your sort of major influences of the time who took you on to the next level apart from I would say the the, the staff photographer from the newspaper yes. who must have been instrumental in your in your movement towards he, he was I mean the thing was that I I, I, I he, he actually left <laughs> and uh, he left the paper and the editor said well you know all about it now you become the staff photographer and I was, and I was 17. Wow. Amazing. But uh, I, I then, um, they were preparing then f for me to go to national service. So when I was 18, 
then I, then I had to give it all up and go into national service. I remember it was the September of 1950, I think, and there was a colliery disaster. And I, I went, and it was not far away, it was, um, it was at a village called Cresswell. I went into the Royal Air Force, and uh, I didn't have a camera of my own, of course. And of course it was impossible, I had, I had no money to buy a camera yeah. like that. So I didn't have a camera. I suppose because I was in journalism, when I eventually did the basic training, I did the basic training in, um, on the Canuck Chase <laughs> in midwinter, <laughs> which was yeah. a good experience, I would say. A good experience. But then, um, then I went to, um, to RAF uh, Bletchley, and uh, then I worked in the... I worked at teleprinters in the main communication centre there. So that I did that um, until about, well, two years, over two years I was doing that. But the, one of the wonderful things was that Bletchley is near to London. And I was interested, and a lot of my friends, were, we, were interested in, we were interested in trad jazz at the time. And so it was only a train ride to 100 Oxford Street where we went to the London Jazz Club. And there was Wally Fawkes, Humphrey Littleton, and all the people. And, and that, that was a great interest for me. And I couldn't have a camera to photograph them, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I listened to the music, and I enjoyed that very much indeed. But so I, I, then I got to like the idea of London. Yeah. I think we used to stay in the Union Jack Club. If you stayed in the Union Jack Club, you could go to the reception, and you could get, um, you get a ticket. I, I saw my first opera. Yeah. I saw a magic flute at, at uh, Covent Garden. <laughs> accessible, everything was accessible. You know, so, 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 so really um, being in the Royal Air Force was uh, quite a um, bit uh, broadened the horizons incredibly, you know. Mm. So, you were getting a bit rusty, I think, with your photography then, because you wouldn't be able to do... I wouldn't do... No, I wasn't doing anything. So what put you back on track? But when I, I went back, of course, they, 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 they welcomed me back to Did the... Did everything just sort of stop for people when they did national service? You sort of, if you left a job, it would still be there when you It got was back. there, yes. Gotcha. They, they had to take me back. Gotcha. So I went back to the... I went back to the weekly paper, and I sort of... Uh, I, I think I developed my interest, really, in photojournalism, really. But you were a changed man then, I would presume. Yes, you were an, yes. an adult, fully yes. grown, yes. a bit more of a worldly man now, weren't but you? I, but, um, I, mean, I, I, I mean, this is, this is something that um, so many of my contemporaries, uh, I, I know, uh, recall, and that is that um, there was a marvellous magazine at the time called Picture Post. That's right. I remember my uncle took it right from, he'd been taking it from day one, 1938, I think it was. And I used to go and look at it, and I thought it was absolutely wonderful. That was a, I thought, well, that is the kind of photography I would like to do. Bert Hardy and... Yes, like that, yeah. all those people. So that was my ambition, really. So I got a portfolio of uh, work in between doing my my weekly newspaper uh, work, but they were very, you know, the, the, the paper was very good because they would, they would occasionally use my, my own kind of pictures. But I built up this portfolio. I thought I'll go and see Picture Post. So I went into London and met Picture Post people. They were so kind to me. They really were. I met a man called Bill Stacy. I think he was the he was the picture manager. He managed the yeah. the, the, the photographers, and he was so helpful to me. And he gave me a great long list of people to go and see. You know, he um, introduced me to a picture post writer who had started the picture agency. This picture post writer was uh, David Mitchell, and he'd started this agency. And I went to see him. And I, and I said, yes, come out for a drink, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. And I remember going out often with him 
I couldn't live in London, not on my weekly paper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do remember going to lunch and there, were, and there was Grace Robertson and Thurston Hopkins and all these people. And they were, I was surrounded by all these wonderful yeah. people. So uh, Pitch Post was my ambition, really. But if you've got no money or anything, you know, you know you've, yeah. that's, that's a main thing. You can't, you've got to live, haven't you? So um, I was really rock bottom, actually, and I decided to leave the uh, weekly paper. But um, it was a very difficult time then, very difficult to, um, to do freelancing. We didn't even have a phone at home. Can you imagine? I could imagine. It was very, yes. Any? Very different. So very difficult. Um, very different. You know, I'm talking about early 50s and uh, it's very difficult. Picture post folded not long after that. Well, I, I'm, I'm coming to that. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, the thing is that um, I have to uh, have a life. And so I got a job in, on a, 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 an evening newspaper in Northampton. And that was wonderful. There were all the young people there absolutely wonderful and uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, working there uh, then that came to an end and I went then from there to a even newspaper in Lincoln I then went this is how you how you progress you see in yeah. in, which in you newspaper photography as well and would you have to find somewhere to live in the two oh yes time? yes okay yeah. And how was that a system in place? Was there a, a progression system in place for moving up? The it's just moving up, you see. Really? Yes. So I went to Birmingham. I was very happy there because the picture editor was a really good. He was a good man and um, he just let, let me do things, you know. And uh, yeah. so that was, that was a, there were two morning papers and the two evening papers in, uh, in Birmingham at the time. But I was still going to London and... And finding out, and dining with yes, the picture and but I I called at the Daily Mail office, and they yeah. the picture editor saw my work, and and actually said, well, we could you, you know we could uh, do with some young blood, he said, in Manchester. Yeah. So there's so many veterans around, you know, and wonderful people. So I got to um, I got to Manchester, and uh, I don't think they really welcomed somebody who'd been sent from London, really. And um, it took me quite a long time to... Yeah. So, to, so you've to, been doing the apprenticeship, haven't you? Yes, yeah. yes. I had spent quite a long time there at the Daily Mail, but there were some wonderful people there. Yeah. The chief um, reporter there was uh, a wonderful man. He taught me about tenacity. Never let go of anything, you know. Keep on, never take no for an answer. Yeah. He was a great, great um, a reporter. I I I I really liked liked him very much. He was uh, yes, he was quite an inspiration really, and uh, the kind of um, assignments you would get very newsy, you know, not the sort of things I really wanted to ever to do. I, I like? mean, the, the idea of doing a, a photo essay would have been you know they wanted single, really great single immediate impact pictures really. What was pushing you to want more? than just a single image? What was in your head? All my early um, ambitions, really. I used to take um, uh, Life magazine and Picture Post, and, and, and then I started to get books. And I saw, I mean, in Life magazine, I've still got it here. Uh, yeah. I've still got it. I've got, I've, I've got the um, Ernst Haas, wow. um, New York. I thought, I was wonderful. Ernst Haas was obviously an early influence. Oh, great, yeah. great influence when you saw that. I, then, of course, I knew all these names, yeah. you know, all the early Magnum people. Yeah. And, of course, I tried to collect whatever books I could and, and learn from them, really. Yeah. How did they tick? <laughs> what made them tick, you know? That's what we all do, though. Yes, yes. So, so, so that, was, that was the way I... Uh, a progress really of course and then there was a another young photographer on the daily mail at the same time as me who was graham finlayson graham managed to get on the guardian in manchester when it was just about the manchester guardian you see then when graham left the guardian i was offered the job on the guardian and that was the early 70s yeah but it was no no this was the 60s early 60s really? yes and unfortunately they only ever had two photographers, two staff photographers on The Guardian in a hundred years. They only wow. had about 
about seven in Manchester, you know. Right. Uh, so it was really difficult. And one of the photographers wanted to come back from London, and so I missed the job. Oh, no. I couldn't have the job, although I'd been offered it. So I had to wait, and I got to the Daily Mail, and I remember that I was there in 57. As soon as I arrived there, picture post folded. So, so I would nowhere to go. Oh, your dreams had been shut. Oh, my dreams had gone. So I would nowhere to go then. So I made the best of it. So I did everything. I've, one of the things, I think because I, they thought I'd been in the RAF, I, I, I did quite a lot of, of uh, flying. And if there's anything, you know, that needed uh, somebody to take uh, stuff from, from a, from a do you have an rapide or something, or mm. an Oster, then uh, I would, I'd go and, uh, and take aerial pictures. So right. I've, I've, I did a lot of that. And so in fact, I was around and I photographed the, I photographed, I got, I got the only photograph of, uh, of the Moors murder uh, scene from the air. Yeah. So this book here of how they were, this is for everybody from Diana to James Cameron, Curtis? Wow. Curtis. What was yes. he like? Um, you've got a shot, you've taken pictures of Andre Curtis in Salford. Yes. That's not something I ever imagined him being in Salford. <laughs> Andre Curtis came to uh, Manchester to, they, one of the um, Salford, uh, quite famous uh, painter is Harold Riley. And Harold was interested in photography. He became really very, very interested in photography. And he decided that he, we, could, we could have a festival. And he had uh, a festival of photography mm. and brought Kurtesh over. Wow. I remember saying to Andrew Kurtesh, would, like would you like to have a look at Salford with me? And what? And he's, when in war? And, uh, yes. And so, he, uh, he, of course, and... So he came out with me, and um, and we had a wander around Salford. This is something I've never really envisaged. Of course, has been in Salford, and you've got the pictures that he was there. That's oh yes, that's yes. so you so yes. lucky to get that. You know, he's got a famous picture of a bench, so I, I photograph him on a bench, oh. and that sort of thing. Yes, that's wonderful. I think he was quite an inspiring man, really. I mean, he was he, he was he was telling me. You know, it was, it, was, it was showing me how a picture would be... Yeah, did he give you any tips? ...organised. Yeah. You know, yes. Wonderful. Yes. It, so in this book you've got a, a lot of jazz musicians, and this book itself does chart on your work... Yes, ...through yes. the 50s right up to the, all threes and influential people. And you can see you've worked really hard, I mean, in their business. I never stopped. <laughs> You're a good working photographer, and then... This book obviously met your journey and this greeted your journey into the, into the Guardian and, and you eventually got your Guardian job yes. in the early 70s. Yes. And then was, did being at the Guardian give you a chance to shoot some things the way you wanted? Absolutely. I mean, I thought I'd come home. Yeah. Well, absolutely wonderful. It took me a little while to, to shake off the sort of Daily Mail kind of thing, you know. Can, but yeah. uh, but um, Treasure in Manchester was... Uh, he just he just loved you bringing pictures in, and if you had an idea, you'd go and do it. Yeah, you know? is that how it worked, was it? And uh, and the and the the features editor there in Manchester was, he was a sort of features editor for, the features department really was, all um, produced from Manchester. So he was a great um, a colleague really, and a very great ally really for. And, and, and helped me tremendously. I could only just say, can I do something? Yeah. And he, he thought it was... And that's why I did The, the Shepherd. They, they must have had a big sort of competition. He'd become Shepherd of the Year. Yes. And so we went to see him. And I went with a colleague, a reporter, Alan Dunn. And we went up and we spent a day with him. I thought, well, this is absolutely wonderful. And I went to the, the, uh, the features editor and I said, look, do you think I could do um, feature. a feature, a regular feature through the year? And so we can have a year of, of a shepherd. Said, oh, yeah, do whatever you like. That kind of, can you imagine that? That was wonderful. So, so I was able to go up and, um, and photograph Ray Dent 
and his family and yeah. throughout the seasons really yeah so that that was so i i put all those photographs together eventually and with uh, alan doing some texts and um put them all together and i sent it off to a publisher and they came back and just said oh yes we're doing it <laughs> and did it Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I didn't have much say of the layout or anything, but yeah. but they did it. So it was that was my first um, success, really. That, that was that was a wonderful part of the Guardian. But um, I remember I was only I, I'd been very I hadn't been anywhere uh, abroad really for the for the Daily Mail. But um, but I think the nature of your, the work you were doing wasn't going to send you abroad, was it? Cause no, you were doing no. Local, regional countrywide news work with yes but I, I remember the um the foreign editor said it was family it was it was really people everybody everybody was um interested in what you were doing yeah you know it was a good group to run they, they, everybody yeah. and it was um it was an office where people bounced ideas off people yeah. you know and that was that was a wonderful thing of when you went into the office that that that, that would happen and so, I mean, the foreign editor said to me, oh, I'd like you to go to the Middle East, Dennis. I want you to... Uh, we've got an interview with um, King Hussein. And uh, I said, and then we, we, I want you to go to the Emirates. He said, well, you can do all this. And he said, and then I, I, want, I want you to go eventually to, uh, to Israel. I met up with the uh, Middle East uh, correspondent, um, uh, David Hurst and and we went to see King Hussein. I absolutely, <laughs> I mean, you, you you can't believe this that um, that I'm sitting there with King Hussein, and he's he's not interested really in the politics. He's not interested in talking about politics. He's interested in talking about photography to me, <laughs> and talking about my family and everything. Uh, and so wonderful um, moments like that. At the same time, I could go to somewhere like Petra while I was waiting, mm. <laughs> you know. So How was that as a first ever overseas job, though? All them years of training, yes. you ready for that moment? And, uh, yes, yes. And then weirdly, you connected with the subject. It doesn't yes. matter who it is, because that's, that it's the king of whatever. Yes. And our job, we have privileged that we get to meet these people, sort of people and find out that often, sometimes they're not human, but most of the times they're human. They are. Mm. And there's a connection there, isn't there? And we, we're very privileged in this industry that we, we, we experience that. But you've still got to create the work, you've still got to get yes. the job. And, and you, you've spent 30 years getting to that point, 40 years getting to that point. You were ready for it. When Alan Rudsbridger came to The Guardian, he had an idea he would send a team of people to uh, to, uh, to a place mm. and there would be all the specialists you see the, the politicos and the people uh, like michael billington would be going and and uh, from the theater and and so there was a good team of people i remember we went to we went to moscow it was quite a big team with Polly Toynbee and well, the one, Janacek was there. I'm just going to reach um, over because you've got a book here, which is people of the Soviet Union. But the thing was about, um, about the Soviet Union was that I had a friend at um, Manchester University who, who had uh, been at Cambridge yeah. and he had been learning Russian at Cambridge and he, he rang me one day and he said, I've got a bursary. To, I, I can, he said, I, I've, I've never been able to speak Russian. Really? <laughs> I want to go. Will you come with me? You see? So, so I did. We spent, um, we, had, we had a few um, trips yeah. of our own to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg and over, over into Central Asia. Yeah. Yes. So we went over right over into um, Uzbekistan and and uh, Leningrad and, and, and uh, all these kinds of places. Yes, and um, so that was uh, interesting. So I'd I'd got quite a lot of visits that I'd made to the Soviet Union, really. Yeah. And then then I went um, at the collapse of the Soviet Union. 
uh, we went up to um, to Leningrad as it was as it was becoming St. Petersburg again. Yeah. Yes. So that was that was an interesting another interesting uh, occasion. That that, uh, I went life, to the I life went, before the Soviet collapse, isn't it? In, like that was that's in oh, the eighties. Yeah. That was before like the end of the Berlin Wall and all of that sort of yes, the Cold yes, War was sort of yes. coming to an end. What was life like then in the eighties in Russia? It was pretty um, bleak, I think, for people. Yeah. That's for most period. people. I mean, you could see that photograph of a wedding there. Yeah. That I photographed. I mean, that's at the on. Um, it's it's near the university. Yeah. Where they they you can see right across um, from must the balcony be, there. Must have been quite a culture shock for you in a sense going there in that time because you you were really at the height of the Cold War. And, yes. And then oh, going yeah. to Moscow, yeah. the enemy is such as they yes. say. Yes. It must have been quite because I know when I was there in the early 90s, it was a bit daunting. Well, I loved it, but it was like, whoa, it yes. was very daunting. So then it was sort of, be quite an interesting place to go. Everywhere you go, everywhere you can see, you're, you're, you're seeing pictures. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, yeah, you do, don't you? It's, but you know what's interesting about that is, is that you are seeing pictures because it's new. And that's the beauty of going to places like India, going, abroad and stuff because you're not used to the environment so you're seeing things which are different to what you're seeing but the skill is being able to create on your own doorstep and it's being able to create work which is exactly the same focus and same um, amount of energy and effort and foresight is what's going on right outside your doorstep and I teach students that so if you can't look at what's outside of you and create a narrative and imagery how are you going to do it when you start venturing further afield, learn to take pictures here. And that's what you were doing. When you went to Soviet Union, you went to India, but this is another book. You were equipped, you were ready, you knew how to do it, you knew how to look, you knew how to see. Isn't that right? And this is a trip to India. What, what motivated this trip? Was this another Guardian job? And that, that was a Guardian, yes. yes, yeah. yes so yes. where did you go here? Well, I went to I went no, I went south. I got I I I I contacted people that I knew. I was on my own, but I'd contacted people that I I knew about, and they were helpful to me. There was a um, a nice guy who was the, he was like picture editor of the of a of a, a paper in um, in what was then Madrid. Yeah. Madras, Madras, I'm sorry, that's it, yeah. that's what... Madras, and uh, and uh, so I spent time down there, and then um, then I went to, to uh, Calcutta, I just walked around, you know, and I I just I went to Mother Teresa's house and all this sort of, you know, yeah. that's a great shock, was uh, Calcutta, totally yes. different culture, quite a shock. What was the story about you? Not being able to afford a black lacquer. <laughs> when you taped up your lacquer, a silver lacquer. Well, I, 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 I well, I, I, Because I, I, I presume you're shooting the lacquer. I, I, the thing is, I, I, <laughs> oh, oh, all these cameras are always quite expensive, weren't they? Absolutely. Still so I, I, I got a, um, I did buy a, a Leica M2 and uh, with a 35 millimeter one four. And that's still my favourite camera. But, um, yeah, I might have put some black tape on it. But, you taped uh, up a like it. I think, I think <laughs> I'd heard that... But I, th I think I'd heard that uh, Cartier Bresson did it. Possibly. Yeah. Quite a lot of people did that. No, I, I really couldn't afford to buy a new M2 at the time. But I have a big family, you see. Yeah. How yes. many kids? Yes. How many kids? When I was on, on, when I was on the... Uh, I was on the Daily Mail in the early days. I would find myself on the night shift most most of the time in the early days. And I I found it was wonderful because I could spend time with the family and uh, we could I could take the kids out. Yeah. And uh how and I could photograph them. Look if you see if you see my, oh, the my book, book the here. So how many I, have you got? I, I, I have six children. You have six children. I have three sons and three daughters. You it's the most friend. wonderful, wonderful thing of my life is my family. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, totally. There's my wife here. 
Plus you made a little blurb book of it. I did make a blurb. Fantastic. Is that in the newspaper? That was in the Daily Mail. Well, you got your wife in just after birth? Yes. And you got her in the Daily Mail? It's, it's the... Well, I didn't get her in the Daily Mail. Well, it's a her. long story, this you picture. You shot her, she ended up... Do you, want, do you want me to tell you this long story? <laughs> I could tell you this long story. The long story is that I photographed my wife and the midwife like this just after the birth of my second yeah. child, who was Jane, I, I would always kept in touch with a wonderful man in London who I'd met right at the very beginning of my uh, quest into, into real photography. Uh, when he was, he was called Norman Hall, right. and he was the editor of Photography Magazine. And he was a great guy who really supported me. Photography magazine had a, an annual every, every year. They had, they had a, uh, the photography yeah. annual. And he would use my pictures in there. Pictures that had not made the Daily Mail, yeah. <laughs> possibly. And, but he used them. Um, I'd sent him a picture of my wife, this picture of the birth. Yeah. And he used it in the photography yearbook. Apparently, I didn't know this at the time, a copy was sent, press copy was sent to the Daily Mail. And there was a famous editor called William Hardcastle. And he uh, looked at uh, this picture, looked at the book and, get, and stopped when he saw this picture of mine. And he said, what a wonderful picture, find out uh, who, the, who the wife, who the, who the woman is, who the, who the midwife is, find out who the photographer is and everything. So we got the Daily Mail London news desk. To find you all. To find it all. And they eventually found, they, they rang Manchester and said, where does, can you find this photographer called Dennis Thorpe? And the Daily Mail news editor said in Manchester said he works here <laughs> so so that's what happened then <laughs> so that was um, but they, they, they would not have been interested you see that's a great shot you see but it was a kind of picture that um yeah so so my family I've photographed them here I photographed my wife with this is Jane this was the child then, and there's, yeah. there's the last yeah. uh, child. When was that? This is my w pregnant wife, and it's 1970, could be 1974 or yeah. something like this. 70, I'd taken it in 74. Anyway, there was a photo keener in Cologne. It was a very famous um, curator of pictures called... Uh, Fritz Kreuber, and uh, he'd seen this picture, and it was on exhibition at the Photokina. And it was, um, they'd blown it up about 10 foot wide. Up there? Yes. Right. And so I got, I, I got invited there and uh, to, to Photokina. Wow. And met all these people, and met so many different people there. Yeah. And, uh, but th these, these were, used eventually I think in the Guardian because it was just about that time yeah. I'd, I'd eventually gone to the Guardian. So you had a really good life with the Guardian haven't you? I have yeah. And yes, I've been very I think that showcased itself in some of the books which have come out in later years and especially with books like um, A View from the North it shows your work it shows um, who you are as a photographer and your diversity. I mean, some of the composition elements of your work I love and I've always been attracted to that with the way you compose. You're very tight on your composition and you, mm. you can see you understand composition, especially your landscape work when you, when you like the, um, is it the Ribble, Ribble Viaduct shot? The Ribble Head Viaduct, Head yes. Bridge. Head yes. Bridge is something out of the Victorian times and it's just a beautifully composed um, shot and a lot of your shots and the way you use it, people in the relationship with with the landscape and 
I think it's come out in, in later years with your association with Blue Coat Press and just by looking at the books you've got in front of me, sitting in your lovely drawing room um, in, in your house in um, near Stockport. Not many and books here, are there? I just <laughs> don't. Please do not let me look at them, please, because I'll never leave. Because I'm looking at them in my side. In fact, you've got my book. I have got, of course, That's your me. book. Do you not sign that? Of course, That's my please. book. <laughs> yes, oh, you I must sign your book. I a book of mine in Dennis. You must Bob's sign that. That is like, I'm, I'm made up now. You must sign, you must sign that book. <laughs> I'll sign it if it's not signed. I'm going to sign, so I, I got him to sign my book earlier. But what I want to get at is, you, you've opened my eyes to two things um, today. One, you've shown me this incredible fishing book. I, I'm like, I'm blown away by this book something I've not seen before. But when I first arrived, I'm going to move this. You showed me, oh, this is heavy, that's why I'm straining. Showed me this book, which is, it is in the style of a bit of like loose cloth press style, isn't it? But you yes. made this book. It's a, Dennis has just handed me this massive book and it's heavy. And it's called On, si On Assignments Abroad and is this, would you say it's your retrospective book? For, for um, yes, yeah. for, for, for... So you've created the narrative, the dummy, yeah. you've done the editing, yeah. you've looked at everything, and you've created this dummy book. What's going to happen with this now? Well, hopefully I can get it. Um... How many pictures are in it? Hmm? How many photos? I think it could be 200 or so. Yeah. It feels like there's 200. My 200. right arm is falling off. Yes. I mean, it just covers everything, doesn't it? From yes. Calcutta to Moscow, um, just... Yes, from the States, really, until everywhere, really. Japan. What I've, what I've done with this book, I think I've sort of tried to explain that... Um, you take me through it. What I've done with it, I've, uh, I've tried to sort of... It, uh, say, as I said, it's a random collection. Um, what I've tried, I've, I've, I've seen that what people do, what are their activities, and I've seen that they, in different parts of the world, yeah. the same activities yeah. are mirrored. So I, I've, I've done a bit of juxtaposing, saying here we have the passengers yeah. on the subway in yeah. New York, and passengers in Yokohama. <laughs> right, so you, you uh, yes. juxtapose them both. It's uh, almost like a diptych, isn't it? Two shots. Yes, yeah, so, like so train. you know, and... and, and that's, what's that? Is that? That's two shots as well. Yes. I like that. So but, uh, but then we've got... The silhouettes uh, I've, together. I've, I've been to Zagor, seriously. But, uh, yes, there's a chef yeah. in Manhattan there. But there are two chefs in Perugia. <laughs> and what, we, what do you feel, what's this book about? What do you feel you're trying to say with this well, book? Well, it's, it's, just, it's just about my world, really. Yeah. And uh, on the way I see it, I'm, I'm in Rikers Island prison yeah. here. <laughs> Where's that? In New York. Yeah. Rikers Island. And there's a prison guard. Yeah. And there are slogans all painted beautifully on the yes. walls and with a cell block here yeah. and, the, and the prison guard and this and the slogan is there and it says we all are our brother's keeper yeah how wonderful is that wonderful. see that and then i'm in miles away right over in st petersburg yeah. at a at a at, at a um a penal colony, and they're standing in the middle of a scene which, <laughs> goodness knows, you couldn't believe, you could have, you think you'd have to make it. But yeah. what they were doing was, in, in this penal colony, they were making laminated furniture, and so they were using a lot of steam around. Wow. So there was loads of steam coming out, and this this prisoner standing in the middle there and I made a portrait of him in the middle of this this workshop with screen. He almost looks like a ballet dancer. Absolutely. 
doesn't he? Yes, yes. Very theatrical. And that's so, based in Petersburg. So... I see you linking wherever I've, wherever I've been, I, I've just tried yeah. to photograph ordinary people yeah. going about their ordinary yeah, lives, yeah. whatever they're doing. Do you think that will... Do you think... What's next with this book, then? Do you think that will be... You're going to get this published with Blue Court? It's if I, just going to happen with Blue Court Press, do you think? Well, well, I would hope so, yes. I would hope so. Yeah. And what about this trawler man? Because you've got to do something with that. The trawler man, yes. You have to do something with that. I have to do something you with You do it. have to do something with that. I'm, not, I'm demanding you do something. I will. That. Because that is, is sort of... It's very different to what you shot, in a sense. Because it's been square format. It is a different... It, it isn't, it's, it sounds complicated, it is and it isn't very different to what you've normally shot. But there's a difference about it. There's a difference. There's is a it, lot of... Is there a naivety to there's that? There's a lot of years. You were right in the faces. There's a lot of years in between, I'm afraid. Yeah. You had a different that's, approach. That's when, that's um, my very early years, really. Yeah, but for 1958. There's quite a lot of year, early years there. Yeah. That's pretty accomplished, but a very different style to what you went on mm. to actually mm. maintain, like do. Obviously there's influence in there, mm. but there's a style, there's something very different about that. There's some beautiful, I can't believe, I've not seen that, this before. That is, um, blew me away. that's where I've always wanted to be, I think. What, on a trawler, passing your tin out to a passing ball? <laughs> yes, I've always wanted to be in that, uh, in a situation where I can, I can observe people. Evolve. And be involved with yeah, people. Yes, it's amazing. Yes, yes. It's like fascinating listening to it. Who's been your biggest influence in your life in terms of your photography or, or just your general life in general? I admired so many yeah. uh, people and uh, in photographers, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it would be wonderful to say that, um, that I got tremendously... Uh, Inspired by, you know, privilege of having yeah. to walk around Salford with Andre Curtis. Inspiration comes at different stages yes, of your life, doesn't it? It does. It does. No one, um, no one person really would say. I mean, I was so pleased to meet Bert Hardy. You know, yeah. and uh, I mean, he'd been quite a big influence in my early days, seeing all his pictures. Yeah. And I went, I went to photograph him, and he's been there somewhere. Yeah. And, um, but there's people at the time, like Humphrey Spender, all of these sort of people in that period who were around here, you know, like photographers from these, these air, this area, because you were, you know, this is where you come from. So Humphrey Spender was a particular yes. photographer. There was a lot of, you know, with the, um, the mass communication group in Bolton and Blackpool, the mass observation group. Did you link into any of that when you? I, I, when we, I didn't. I, I I did meet Humphrey Spender once. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But were you aware of what they were doing? At oh the time? Yes. yeah. Yeah. Was that in any way a sort of influence? Oh, yes. Yeah. On you, what was Spender like? I I, I only met him once. And, yeah. You know, with with other people. So. Yeah. What about your archive now? Where's all your archive? Well, my archive really will be. Um, I mean, I'm working at it, and. You see, you saw those pictures of yeah. the colour in, uh, in the Trawler Man book. Yeah. Now, colour was difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I took a lot of pictures of, uh, on, on uh, Kodachrome. Yeah. Um, dur during my early years, they couldn't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by couldn't do anything with them? Yeah, well, you couldn't, um, you couldn't print them. Right, gotcha. Or you, or you could have them printed, and that cost a fortune. Yeah. So you could only project them, really. Of course, yeah. So, and I think magazines and people at the time, newspapers, they couldn't, well, no, newspapers couldn't print colour anyway. Yeah. But magazines and, uh, would always want a, they'd always want a big format colour if they were using colour. Yeah. So really, I, I stored a lot of my uh, colour uh, work and I found eventually that I could scan my nice. early 1950s colour wow. 
and for the for that for the trawler men book and it worked absolutely wonderful after all those years how old is it well i mean it's from that would be from from 50 oh i thought you meant your scanner Oh my, oh my. Oh, no, I meant how old, but you had a scanner and you found your scanner from... Oh, no, 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 years. no, I, I, I've got a new scanner. I, so... I, I had a new scanner. Yes. Your archive is all in your possession. It is. And you're but, looking but, after it. But it, a, a lot of my archive is already with the Guardian. The Guardian, yeah. Because they've, they've got a really super place. For yeah, and that's... It. Where do you think it'll go for the future in, in, in terms of historical... Well, well, hopefully it'll just go to the Guardian, and, so you, and they can they can yeah, they can do Guardian, yeah. you know. I and mean, do you, and do you get still get syndicated through the Guardian with your work? So yes. people want to buy. Do you syndicate with anybody else, like Alamy or any other? No, you don't. No, you're not no, Getty or anything no, like that. No, you don't. Um, no, no. And, mo most of my work has been really uh, through newspapers and through the yeah, through the uh, yeah, Guardian. Yeah. Most of my. What scanner are you using? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> it, Sorry. It, whatever is the Epson, whatever is the... 5,000, 9,000... Whatever is his, like that, yeah. whatever is the... the, the yeah. I, that's the one I've used. But before that, when I first started with this scanning, you see, I've always had a dark room here. Wow. I've always made my own prints, whenever possible. Yeah. I mean, I'm obviously... Uh, Obviously, when I was working in the newspaper office, yeah. you, you 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 know you've you've, you've got a, you've got a department um, uh, with dark rooms and uh, yeah. and uh, other staff doing prints, but they were always very very at the Guardian. They were always very very kind, and they they wouldn't mind me supervising. <laughs> but um, the dark the dark room uh, work. I enjoyed. I like the craft of photography. Yes, of course. I really loved it. Yeah, you can see that. Anyway. I have two. I have two lights, Focomat enlargers, mm. which unfortunately I've just let go. Because mm. I, I really can't work in. I'm a bit ancient, and I, I, I can't really. I can't. I haven't got the energy now. Yeah. To 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 spend time rocking the dish. Not even with Tesma <laughs> special in the, in the background, with cricket on. And... Yes, but uh, so uh, so that's it. But um, what I've got was a lot of um, twelve by sixteen prints. Yeah. And uh, Alan Rusbridger organised me a flatbed scanner, an A3 scanner. So I was able to make a lots of my archive uh, the scan, the fr that, uh, yeah. from from the original prints. Yeah, you know where I'd made made all the instead of photoshopping, I'd actually done all the work in the dark room. Right. Yeah. See. Yeah. You used, well, it is the same thing, really, isn't it? It's yeah. Digital. I'd done all the work in the dark room. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm no good at Photoshop. At all, I don't want to be. No, who is though? I don't want to be yeah, any good at Photoshop. You only need I, to know what you need to know. I, 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 uh, all I need to know is how to get rid of blemishes and things like that. And but, you know but, what? But for moving people, and you know what? That's you're not allowed. all I know, and that's all you need to know. Mm. I've spent years just resizing, contrast levels, get rid of that bit of dirt from my lens. That's it. It's done. You that's don't need it. to do anything more. <laughs> Good old press photographers. We don't manipulate images. <laughs> Listen, it's been wonderful, Dennis. Thank you so much for taking the time and inviting me to your home and um, just listening to your stories and we're finding out more about the other work because one final question is what we discussed when I first met you and I said, why haven't you got a website? <laughs> I, 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 I don't really know. I... I was so surprised. Everything I find on you is a bit of um, Wiki and The Guardian. There should be this big website saying Dennis Stoll, and you should be educating us, things like that. And you yeah, perhaps I need someone to do it work. for me, actually, possibly. Mm -hmm. You do need Possibly, but I've not. Yeah, I've, I've probably come a little bit late into, into websites yeah. and things.
I mean, I carried, when I was um, coming to the end of my time at the, as a staff man yeah. at the Guardian, then we were, I'd obviously got into the Max yes. things. We were just into scanning and Max. Yes. And so I carried on through that. Yes. But I think I've come a bit, I came a bit late for making websites, you yes. see. So I don't you can, do that. You don't need one made for you. you. There's lots of simple, good website organisations out there who set, have a simple set of yes, templates yes. which costs you £10 a month to run it. And you should have somewhere to show past your archive and show who you well, are. Perhaps one of the family might be able to do it. My son yeah. Peter is a photographer. I'm happy to give you some advice and stuff on that later on mm. after that. But listen, Dennis, it's been wonderful and I look forward to seeing your website soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure listening to you, and um, let's just uh, keep me updated. Thank on you. This. Well, I'll be able to go and photograph my birds again now, won't I? <laughs> oh, don't let me stop you from your birds. Don't <laughs> let me stop you at all. It's really wonderful. <laughs>